In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already outplaying him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Welcome to The Next Word. I'm going to be your host every week, and my name is Christine Warnke, and I hope to bring to you some extraordinary and exciting guests. Tonight, we have Dr. Janetta Cole, the Smithsonian Institution Director of the National African Arts Museum, as well as Mr. Gabriel Christian, an author, attorney, and co-founder of the Institute of Caribbean Studies. A year ago, Haiti suffered from a massive earthquake. And today, people are still saying that nothing has changed. However, there are people trying to do things. And tonight, we're going to have this conversation about what people have been doing to keep this issue in the minds of the American public. Dr. Cole and Mr. Christian, welcome. When that earthquake struck, at the Smithsonian, we knew that we could, we could send flashlights, we could send food, we could send money, and as individuals, we did. But as an institution, we knew that we really had a responsibility to help Haiti recover her cultural heritage. Who are a people without their culture? And so I'm very proud to be associated with an institution that has now actually set up a place where out of the rubble, paintings are being recovered, where stained glass windows are being repaired. You know, we as human beings, we need food, we need water, but we also need our sense of, our, of identity, our sense of culture. And you, you say, you, you mentioned, I know we've, we've talked about, I've seen this when I walk into the museum doors, about the healing through art, mm. which is so important. And this is a healing process, and, 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 having, and, and, you know, and having that art there. Mm -hmm shows the American public as they walk through those doors that there is still a country that's suffering. Exactly. In addition to this Smithsonian project, we at the National Museum of African Art, a museum where I am proud to say Christine Warnke is a board Thank member. You. Thank you. We have, we have presented the art of children. As the First Lady of Haiti, Elizabeth Braval, has put it, that earthquake wounded children in their bones and in their souls. And she, along with Philippe Dodard, Haiti's very famous artist, set up camps where children could come and, and use art and music and theater as a healing device. Madame Praval asked us at the museum if we would consider exhibiting some of these works. It was one of our proudest moments, I no. think, to say yes. And so an exhibition which began in June has been extended twice and will finally come down at the end of February. Art has the ability 
to describe the human condition, mm -hmm. to pose questions about the human condition. But it also has the ability to help us heal what is going on with the human condition. Absolutely. And, um, and I know, Gabriel, you have, um, you've written about this. You know, Gabriel being an author, and I read, with, I read your book about Madam Charles. Yes, indeed. And um, you've written about the reconstruction that actually has occurred in Dominica, but can you touch upon what you think needs to be done in Haiti yes. moving forward? Let me, let me just say, first of all, uh, Dr. Wanky, I'm so happy that you decided to have this program begin with Haiti. And let me join in that regard with uh, Dr. Cole, who, who uh, is a great hero of all of us who believe in, empower, in, 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 in empowerment element that the spirit provides. Haiti is the second oldest republic in the Western Hemisphere. And Haiti's history, Toussaint Louverture and his fight for freedom, Jacques Desalines, Henry Christophe Pichon, these people are not known to the average American. And so, as with the Institute of Caribbean Studies, I was a founding member, not the founder. Right. Dr. Clint Nelson, my colleague, was. As with the Caribbean Research Policy Center, which in June of last year held the Washington, D.C. Haitian Conference on Reconstruction. Uh, the uh, Ministry of Tourism and Reconstruction was there. The Caribbean Community's coordinator, former Prime Minister of Jamaica, P.J. Patterson, was there. And we brought together the uh, U.S. government, the private sector, the diaspora community, and this is very important because the diaspora, the Haitian diaspora, is that one entity which more than most has a, a great potential to change the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Because Haitians, when you meet them, are some of the most intellectually gifted, hardworking, and, and productive people you can find. Let me give you an example. On the island that I was born on, Dominica, not to be confused with the Dominican Republic, They've been able to blend into a British common law, rule of law society, where there is stability. And they now, while they're about 10% of the population, so my island maybe has the highest per capita population of Haitians anywhere in the world. And uh, they have opened the tailor shops and the barber shops, and they are, they are the most dynamic part of the local economy. They've revitalized certain sectors of agriculture. So we are saying that where we can have the cultural reengineering, as Dr. Cole talked about, where people can see the uh, maj uh, majestic outline of Haitian art, where we can have that cultural reengineering involve uh, spotlighting the great heroes of the Haitian independence movement who imbued that people with the character and the spirit of being able to overcome the challenges of what was a slave state. Mm -hmm. We then cannot. Uh, have Haiti in perpetuity remain on the sad side of the ledger. Because that's not a sad people, that's a great people, a noble people. And what we have to do in the diaspora community as we are doing, and as we attempted to in June, and as we continue to do with the churches that we work with, with the NGOs that we work with to try get the cocoa plantation, uh, small planters to make their own chocolate. Don't just send the, the cocoa overseas. Try to rebuild their agriculture. Haiti was very, very self-reliant with regard to rice production until uh, trade agreements led to the diminution of that productivity. If we can help them help themselves, we will be building a sustainable Haitian community and economy. And we, 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 we're very confident that this disaster has within it that silver lining that can allow in partnership with folks here in the United States, with the Smithsonian, with the diaspora community, allow Haiti mm. to come uh, back not to where he used to be, but to be a shining bitten on that hill of the art of the possible. Mm -hmm. And I think Dr. Cole was very, 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 very clear that while we look at things in terms of, uh, you know, infrastructure and in terms of uh, the, uh, uh, the rule of law systems, we must not forget the human spirit because all of that resides Absolutely. and depends on the, on, on, on the human spirit for success. Mm. And, and we just have to change the uh, dynamic and, and have that Haitian character that can overcome shine through. Christine, I want to, want to share that in the exhibition of these works by children of Haiti, we use a quote 
we use a proverb, an African proverb. It says, no matter how long the night, day will break. As I grew up, I, I heard a version of that. And Dr. Martin Luther King would often say, you know, no matter how long the night, joy will come in the morning. And I think it's the responsibility of each of us to have not only the faith, the hope, that Haiti will indeed move to that special place where she belongs. We obviously have a responsibility to participate in that process. Absolutely. And for the Smithsonian, again, I'm proud to say that we, we have tried to touch what is our strength. And that happens to be in the world of art and culture and the recovery. We also, to connect with one of the things that was just said, during the Folk Life Festival, which is that right. wonderful time during right. the summer, when the people of Washington and of our country and the world walk on the National Mall and literally embrace different cultures. This past summer, we featured Haiti. And in particular, there were these extraordinary works of Haitian art, taken, for example, from tin drums and then molded and pressed and pushed and twisted into exquisite works. We have to support that kind of artistic entrepreneurship because one of the things we know is that a very large percentage of Haiti's revenue comes from its indigenous artists. Very true. I've seen uh, very many hotels yes. in the Caribbean with the new teen art that she speaks of. They've taken the 50-gallon petroleum, discarded petroleum drums, and they've made uh, grasshopper figures, uh, uh, fish, uh, uh, tadpoles, and parrots, and all kinds of fascinating creatures. And it's, it's never been done. Yeah. And so they've made out of, 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 of they made something out of nothing, and that's exactly. the Haiti of Haiti. That's, Hades. that's, that's the story of Haiti's revival, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And that's the sort of ingenuity that the uh, that the Haitian people possess. And I think Dr. Cole has hit the yes. nail on the head. And and what's important too is in engaging in that trade, in in cultural uh, artifacts and in in, in, in cultural uh, products, uh, you you also help bolster the pride and the character building that I talk about. Absolutely. It's, not a, it's not a mendicancy concept yeah. or handout concept. Yeah. They're producing, mm -hmm. you're buying, they're selling, there's that, uh, there's that uh, um, uh, uh, enterprise uh, that, that flourishes uh, where, where there's a quid pro right. quo. And so if we can take that on the road, and we certainly thank Dr. Wanky again for bringing the Smithsonian and the diaspora together because well, uh, well we that's certainly what it's want all to... About. It's all about partnerships, yes. and we're going to be taking a short break shortly, but talking about this revival you know it's a new year and this is a time to move forward and okay we'll take a short break dr cole and mr christian stay tuned Welcome back to The Next Word. I'm Christine Warnke, and tonight we have two guests, Mr. Gabriel Christian, co-founder of the Institute of Caribbean Studies, and Dr. Janetta Cole, director of the National African Arts Museum. Dr. Cole's been described as a larger-than-life manifestation of female triumph. In 1987, she was named as the first African-American woman president of Spelman College, and in 1992, U.S. News and World Report named the college as number one in the country. In 2009, she was selected by the Smithsonian Institution to head the National African Arts Museum. A year ago, she instituted the Cultural Recovery Haitian Project at the museum, 
and it's been carrying on for over a year and she's been bringing in and building upon those partnerships to carry the message further about what happened in Haiti in 2010. Dr. Cole, what is your vision now in moving forward for 2011? Well, first let me say that once an educator, always an educator. And so I, I was deeply touched when I witnessed education in its best formation. On a given day, the children in Place Timon, in these camps set up after the earthquake, through video conferencing, were in conversations with a group of children from the J. O. Wilson Elementary School in Washington, D.C. Now, the children in the elementary school in Washington have been studying French. And so with great pride, they stood up and they said, bonjour. And then they showed a drawing that they had done. And in their own words, I'm sure coached a little bit by their French teacher, said the most moving expressions of hope and solidarity. These children of Washington were saying to, if you will, their, their Haitian cousins, I'm so sorry about the earthquake, or don't worry, it's going to be all right. Or they would say mm -hmm. things like, if I could, I would come to Haiti and help you make it all right. We could call that a moment of education. I call it a moment of transformation. When young children are able to understand their connection to other places on earth. That's partnership, yes, among the young, but in a very powerful expression. I see no reason why we can't duplicate this, why we cannot create ways in which in schools, teachers who are not in the position to fly to Haiti and to donate their time could nevertheless do distant learning projects. You know, we've got to be terribly creative. Absolutely. We've got to work much more creatively because a year has passed and not enough has been done. And that connection is so critical. We are a very giving society. And I think that young people today also want to make a difference and also want to give back. So the program that you put together at the museum is one that I think clearly young people that are very technological. And I know you'll be proud to yes. know that this project was initiated out of the education mm -hmm. unit of the National Museum of African Art. Gabrielle is, a, is an author, and I've read a number of his, of his, of his books, um, you know, and, 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 and he's highlighted true women leaders in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, um, Dame Mary Eugenia Charles, yes, not in Her yes. Majesty, unlike Dr. Cole, who right. has been a role model for us in many ways. Yes, and maybe absolutely. Maybe by, by sitting uh, close to her by the principles of osmosis from the higher to lower concentration, maybe I'll learn something this evening. But I can tell you, just to join with Dr. Cole, on, on two things. Dame Mary Eugenia Charles, who we, 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 we spotlighted in the book, Mamo, The Life and Times of Dame Mary Eugenia Charles, did two things that, that, that uh, actually resonate at this point in time. She was one of the first Caribbean leaders who realized that you help people best when you help them help themselves. So she started an agricultural exchange program where we needed agricultural labor. And Haitians came to Dominica to work and would be able to repatriate funds that helped Haiti enormously. And that was the genesis of that growth in our Haitian population that has helped our country immeasurably. And in addition to that, once they became the, the, the difficulties arose during the RC period where there was a coup d'etat. She was part of President Carter's peace mission that went to Haiti to, uh, in fact, effect change. So on a public policy level, 
uh, on, on a national public policy level. We've had uh, women leaders like Dame Mary Eugenia Charles play a very effective role, not unlike what the role you play now at the Smithsonian, in trying to change the agenda from one where simply aid is given, sometimes poorly administered, right. to where the individual Haitian citizen is enabled to then get those boots, and then, of course, Absolutely. you do the bootstraps afterwards. Secondly, as a diaspora organization, the Institute of Caribbean Studies and the Caribbean Research Policy Center, we're saying to the administration that there's a very talented Haitian diaspora. They need yeah. to be front and center of this entire process. Mm -hmm. they, cannot be that, they cannot be bypassed. We have Dr. Batiste, who is a mm -hmm. colonel in the U.S. Army. He's a health care provider in the field of dentistry. You've got Mr. LeBlanc, who runs an IT company that does health care. We can bring all of those people. In fact, one of the biggest producers of uh, uh, hotel foods, Mr. Sinius in uh, Texas, Haitian. He tried to run for uh, presidential office in Haiti at some point in time. All of those persons have done well in the uh, American diaspora so, uh, of Haitians. So where we can craft tax uh, regs that say if you're a Haitian and you're giving money through a bona fide nonprofit, then you get a tax benefit on your U.S. taxes. Where, in fact, you are a uh, Haitian diaspora organization giving assistance to Haiti, we will provide through the Department of Commerce, we'll provide through USAID uh, the assistance to ensure that your impact is uh, enhanced on the ground. So the, the burden, the Haitian people aren't asking us to carry water, they just say, look, we're here. We've got people who are in the United States of Haitian origin, who, as far as immigration and being able to work, they're working, but they're not working legally. Right. Give that uh, uh, amnesty to them so that they can keep on working and, 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 and send those monies to those persons on the island that they're related to, so they can, in fact, energize local industry. So there are things that we can do right now mm -hmm. as American citizens that don't necessarily require us taking any monies from our pockets. Mm -hmm. We know things are tight. We know that we've got a recession going on. But by helping here.